Hey everyone, this is me sitting here all the way back behind all this experimental stuff here. What I want to do today is to try and dispel the myth that Peltier devices are fundamentally inefficient. Uh, for a little bit of reference, uh, you can type in typical Peltier efficiency on the internet and you'll get numbers like 3, 5, 10% efficiency. This setup hopefully will get 100, 200, maybe 300 percent efficient. We'll run the numbers later to find out exactly what we're getting. So to explain what's going on here, so in the middle there is a beer can. The can itself has been refilled with water and it's this little aquarium pump here that's circulating that water through a Peltier system, a two Peltier system and that comes back and returns to the can. And the volume of water in there, which is very important, has been carefully measured out to be 350 millilitres of water. And we'll use that later to figure out what, uh, how much power, how much cooling power and stuff that's going on. So on the other side of that uh, Peltier system are a couple of tubes here. They're going off to a heat exchange uh, or another aquarium pump that's circulating water on that side and to a fan-based heat exchange. They're all running at the moment. The the water now is being pumped through here and pumped through here on this side and the fans are going. What else have we got here? Uh, we've got a timer down there that's going to be used to measure out e exactly one minute and we're going to try and measure the temperature difference over the one minute and to measure that temperature we have a PT100 that's a Platinum 100 probe they're kind of the go-to for very precise measurements and it's been hooked up to a very precise measurement system here we can see currently the temperature inside the can is 22.142 141 142 yeah okay so it's fairly stable at the moment uh, Oh, one more thing, we have a power supply here and the power supply is going to be uh, pumping 3 amps through these devices. These are 10 amp devices so 3 amps is fairly low on the scale. It's probably going to be around uh, 10, 11, 12 watts. Not very much energy that we're going to put into the system. Alright, I'm going to explain all this a little bit more later on. Um, so just for now let's basically what the physical setup is. I'm going to try and reach through here and if I can, oh, can I get that? Okay, I'm going to start this. Where is it? Start the button. There we go. All right, I've given myself 10 seconds here to get my other hand around to the other side here. Hopefully, whoop, wrong power supply. Two, one, go. And hopefully we should start seeing the temperature reduce. It takes a little while for the circulation stuff. There we go. It's already dropping. And I'm guessing this is going to be more than one degree. Uh, let's see if we can have a look. So we're already at 12 watts on the power supply. It's a bit of a surprise. I've roughly done this experiment before. It was usually around 12 watts. I'll tell you what, I should have just played some music here <laughs> while we're running the experiment. But it's only one minute. We're halfway through and we've got more than half degree reduction. Uh, get my hand in, <laughs> try to do this via the camera. Still got 15 seconds left. We've definitely cleared one degree with the reduction. And five, four, three, two, one, zero. We'll just keep an eye on the, the temperature up here and see what that bottoms out. So I'll call it 20.702 I think was the minimum. We'll come back, I'll, I'll come back and have a look at the video later and get those numbers, the, the temperature at the start and the temperature at the end and then we'll calculate how much power is being sucked out of that can. Okay, we'll come back later. Okay, so I went back through the video and I picked out some numbers there. So the first one was the temperature at the start of the test and then there's the temperature at the end of the test, at the end of the 60 seconds. And this is the effectively the average power I took from the middle, the 30 second point for the whole test. So if we want to figure out how much power in terms of cooling that we're getting, so the first thing that we need to do is to subtract the temperatures here. Uh, so I have to do a little bit of maths here. Six, yeah, that's four, four. Oh, no, we've got a lot of fours here. So we've got 1.444 degree C or 1.44 Kelvin. We don't need to use that much resolution. Anyway, that's the temperature difference, but that is for 60 seconds. So the first thing we need to do, well, the second thing we need to do is to take that 1.444, divide it by 60, and we're going to get 20 point. 
look a lot more to uh, 0.0241 that's Kelvin per second the next thing we need to know is the heat capacity of water and I know this figure because I use it quite a lot so it's 4.187 joules per Kelvin per milliliter of water and we can also call that uh, we can change the joules into watt seconds so we're going to have 4.187 watt seconds per Kelvin milliliter and the final number that we need is the volume of water so we have 350 milliliters of water so we can just multiply all those three numbers together and we're going to get what we want but okay all right so first of all 0.0241 kelvins per second times 4.187 watt seconds per kelvin milliliter times the 350 milliliters and we're going to have a little bit of fun here just cancelling out the units so milliliters milliliters kelvin kelvin seconds seconds we end up with just watts at the end of course we have to actually do the numbers so 0 0.0241 times 4.187 times 350 milliliters we end up with 35.32 watts that's a fair bit of cooling considering that we have just 11.3 watts of input and if we want to calculate the the COP of this so those that are familiar with COP it's simply the cooling power divided by the input power I'm going to, have to do the maths again we're going to get a COP for cooling of 3.12 and if you want to do the old school way uh, you just basically divide this by this times by 100% and you'll get 312% efficiency so obviously that's a lot more than what the internet is saying uh, which is around 3 to 10 percent efficient we're talking about hundreds of percent of efficiency here now there's more to the story um, but I think it's pretty clear at the moment that the common perception of Peltier devices as being inefficient isn't really true okay I want to give a little bit more background to this experiment and I'm going to use a diagram which hopefully is going to appear on the screen here behind me in post editing uh, the main point is to show the whole system and also some of the stuff that was off camera before and the main thing that was missing from the previous uh, image was the heat exchange on the hot side and that looks something like this um, it's uh, you basically the water comes in here it goes through a very fine network of fins here comes back out this tube here and you have uh, a fan here for sucking air from the the room from the ambient and adding that heat from the liquid circuit to that to the air and then putting that out into the environment the actual one that was used in the experiment it's the same as this but it's uh, three times longer so it's a uh, it's much better than this one but even this one is pretty good and if you want to do anything with Peltiers you really need to use heat exchangers like this rather than the typical fan with a big aluminium heat sinks okay um, I wanted to just review the numbers that we got in the experiment so we had around 11 watts coming in to the Peltier system from the power supply and around 34 watts getting pulled out of the liquid circuit and where does that go well it combines together into the hot circuit and goes out into the environment so that's 11 plus the 34 would get around 45 watts of heat coming out into the environment that's pretty cool and side point here for heating we can do the same COP calculations or efficiency calculations they're basically the cold side plus one if you look at the mass here it kind of it's obvious uh, so if we do that 45 watts divided by 11 we're going to get a COP of around 4.1 or 410 percent efficiency they're pretty cool numbers especially it's coming out of a Peltier system so it sounds like it's competitive with an air conditioner 
yeah, there's more to the story here, but it's still much, much more than that 3 to 10% that we saw on the internet there before. Okay, um, the next question you might ask is, well, is it real? You know, I might have just faked all this here for the purpose of the video, something artificial going on behind there. It is real, and if you look at the data sheet for the Peltier devices that we're using here, uh, there's a graph for COP, and if we zoom in on the area for 3 amps, you'll find that it's showing COP somewhere in the 4 to 5 region. Um, I'm not sure whether that's heating or cooling, but anyway, it's more than what we measured here. And this experiment here is going to underestimate the true Peltier cooling. Um, there's a few reasons for that. I, I won't go into them now. But anyway, the point is that this experimental result here is roughly in line with what we would expect from the data sheet given the experimental setup. Okay, your next question could be, well, all right, even if it is real, 30 watts, 35 watts of cooling, is that really that much? The answer is yes, it is definitely enough for a lot of applications that require refrigeration, for example. You don't really need that much energy to maintain the system. There's usually only 10, 20, 30 watts of leakage, especially small size system, as long as you're not going too cold, for example, cooler box um, other applications like my butter cooler it literally only requires maybe two one or two watts of cooling um, cooling a can of beer uh, i've done that uh, like a concentrated cooling you really only need about 20 watts of cooling for that um, something else like a, a wine cooler because there's not much temperature difference you really again don't need a lot of cooling but on top of that we can drive this system a lot harder I've chosen 3 amps because I know that that's going to get uh, 300 plus percent efficiency but if you're happy to go down to 100 200 percent efficiency you can use a lot more current and get uh, a lot more cooling going on there plus you can also parallel more and more Peltiers into the system itself to get uh, more and more cooling so far I've got around 300 watts for the heating side uh, I still got a lot of work to do to optimize that but I'm confident that I can get maybe even 500 watt system up and running for next winter uh, and obviously I'll be making a separate video on that in the future Okay, um, let's see. The next item I think I wanted to just discuss was the actual heart of the system, the Peltier itself. So Peltier devices, if you're not familiar with them, have two very thin layers of uh, ceramic here. Inside are some weird metals. I think it's bismuth and terillium or something. I, you'll have to look it up. I don't want to go into the science of it here, but basically you put a current through the wires here and you end up getting a temperature difference between one side and the other. For the actual setup itself, so I took two Peltier devices and I put them around the around these kind of aluminium cooling blocks here or heat exchange blocks. So I took the the cold sides of the Peltier and put those around a center aluminium block here. So that has the water that goes through it there that can pick up the heat or the cold, whatever it is, uh, depending on the way that you're running it. So the cold sides are facing into a center block there. And then on the outside, I had uh, two of these, I hope it's going to all hold together here, something like that, where you've got the kind of a big sandwich here. So the cold on the inside and the hot ones on the outside going to that hot heat exchange. If you look closely at the picture, it actually looks something like this and that's what you get if you watch Netflix when you glue this stuff together which I strongly advise against all right um, now the final sort of technical point that I wanted to make was what happens if you do run them harder so I did some experiments with first of all 3 amps then 6 amps and then 4.5 amps and it, each time I just went from 21 degrees down to 4 degrees, so that's that 17 degree difference between hot and cold. And for the 3 amp test, it took about 30 minutes to cool down that uh, cool down to 4 degrees. For 6 amps, it only took just over 10 minutes to cool down to 4 degrees, which is pretty fast. 
and then for 4.5 amps it took about 15 minutes to cool down to 4 degrees. Again, always starting 21 degrees and then getting down to 4 degrees. I don't want to go into all the numbers there. Uh, definitely you get less efficiency with more current, but in pretty much all of these experiments the cooling efficiency was 100% or more. So it, again, nowhere near these 3, 5, 10% that we see on the internet. And that's really the main uh, message I want to get from this video uh, is that Peltiers can be a lot more efficient than that 3 to 10 percent. You might ask why and it all has to do with that th design of the thermal circuit on the outside of the Peltier. Uh, the Peltier itself, it has limitations but uh, as long as you design the outside circuit, the thermal circuit outside of that, well you're going to get reasonable efficiency from the whole system. Okay, at the end of all that, um, I'd like to introduce my website. It's called peltier-power.com, and it's there for DIY enthusiasts, uh, maybe universities or even commercial applications for people that just want to get more out of the Peltier systems and overcome some of the myths and misconceptions about these devices. Um, it's got things like um, uh, that uh, electrical uh, analogy or the model for a Peltier system, uh, its calculations and examples and so on as well as the results of some of my experiments. It's only new so I'm adding material every week or two uh, based on experiments and here I've got some exciting stuff going on. But anyway just have a look at the website if you've got any uh, feedback just uh, hit me up on email and in the meantime enjoy your Peltier devices. See you next time. Editing videos. A lot harder than you think.